The perpetual calendar is perhaps the most emblematic of complications chez Patek. The tipping point came in 1925 when Patek transferred the perpetual calendar, which had hitherto been safe in the pockets of plutocrats, onto the wrist. Patek Philippe signaled the fact that the wristwatch was now to be taken seriously. And that reference 97975 is one of the most historic timepieces of the 20th century. At Patek Philippe, there are three very, very distinct types of dial display for the perpetual calendar. One of them shows two slots in the upper half of the dial, which display the day and the month. Normally, the lower half of the dial is characterized by a sub-dial at six o'clock, in which the phases of the moon appear, and around there, where one might normally expect to find the running seconds, the date is indicated by a small hand. I like that. I think it's a great looking watch. Other people also prefer the uh, method of using several subdials, each indicating a different aspect of the day. So you have the date, the month, the year, the day, all indicated by the passage of hands around subdials. The third major and very, very distinctively Patek way of presenting a perpetual calendar is by the use of a retrograde indicator that shows the days of the month almost as if they were indicating the floors upon which an old-fashioned elevator has stopped. Patek Philippe continued to make the perpetual calendar wristwatch its own with the launch of a very special retrograde indicator. And then, it, with the 1526, it became the first watchmaking house to put the perpetual calendar wristwatch into series production. So in the space of not even two decades, Patek Philippe had set its stamp unequivocally on the field. Another aspect of the continuity that I so like about the perpetual calendar is the fact that one of the most emblematic of the movements, the 240, which was introduced, I believe, in 1977, has been modified, and it was the first of the wristwatch complications to appear after the so-called quartz crisis, and was in a way a herald of the new age of the mechanical complication. It was a perpetual calendar using the 240Q that appeared, I believe, in 1985. That watch, the reference 3940, again was historically important in that it was, if you like, an amuse-bouche for the horological banquet that would follow with the launch of the Calibre 89 for the firm's 150th birthday and the subsequent cascade of complications that have delighted collectors ever since. A personal favourite of mine is the 3449 and the 3448. It demonstrates the classic, for me, layout of the perpetual calendar, managing to convey this world of information in a most discreet and understated manner. It is perfection. Or at least I thought it was perfection until I saw the 5940. This cushion-cased stunner of a watch made its debut a couple of years ago. For me, there is something really magical about this watch. And even though I normally prefer the apertures in the dial, this uses the uh, subdials. And my only sadness is that my eyesight is deteriorating at such a rate that um, it may be soon too late for me to actually acquire one of these things. <laughs>